will take a, uh, a few seconds. Okay, we're live. Good evening. It's uh, June 16th, 2022. The time is now 6.31 p.m. by my watch. And this is a, the uh, last uh, Finance and Facilities Committee meeting of the year. We'll start out with introductions. Uh, from my, my point of view, uh, Dennis. Yep. Hi, my name is uh, Dennis Puglis. I'm the uh, Director of Facilities for the Greenberg Central School District. I'm David Warner, uh, Committee Chair, Board Member, proud parent of a Woodlands graduate who's now a college graduate, Lisa. Lisa Raymond, Assistant Superintendent for Business. Walter. Walter Simon, uh, a community member who have grandkids who went to school and uh, a daughter who's uh, who teaches in the system. Chris. Chris Fallon, board member, parent of two. Fred. Fred Seba, BBS Architects and Engineers. Um, who's on the comm for the for Greenberg CSD? Um, Zachary Baker, a BOCES tech employee. Jessica? Jessica Muldoon, uh, LFJ parent. Okay. Carol. Carol? Carol Allen, community member. Dr. Allen. Katie. Katie McGee, parent of a seventh grader at Woodlands. Megan. Megan Hack, parent of an incoming kindergartner and incoming second grader. Jim. Looks like he's still connecting to audio. He's still connecting. Okay. Uh, Jim <laughs> Waiting will be a member of the BBS Architects staff. Ah, here he comes. Hello. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? I hear you. That's great. You're just in time to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Uh, uh, Jim Wadig with BBS Architects, uh, project manager. Here he comes. Good. OK, anybody I missed? Yep, I think you missed Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. You, Things moved. All right, go ahead, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Secretary to Facilities. Okay. Anybody else I missed? Mr. Pineda, Trustee Pineda is having trouble logging in, so I'm sending him another link. Yeah. Okay. Shortly. So, here comes Michelle Worrell. Uh, I've given it away now. <laughs> Michelle, can you hear us? I can, I can. Thank you. Hello. I'd like to say a, a sentence of introduction about yourself. Well, I'm a parent of two Woodland students. One graduated last year. I have a daughter in 10th grade and I serve in a couple of PTA over a couple of years. Very good. And here comes Ashley. <laughs> okay. Ashley. Good evening. You're, you're right here at the tail end of the introductions. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Ashley Pineda, GCSD Board of Education Trustee. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. Very good. Okay, so now we need to, um, to go to the agenda. Am I able to share a screen at this point? <clears throat> Let's find out. You should be. Share screen. And we're gonna need. Thank you. 
And I'm not seeing, just a second. Got kicked out of everything that I was in. All right, let me go to this. Okay, so now. There, can you see the agenda? It says you're starting screen sharing, but we don't see an agenda, or I don't. Your screen sharing is paused. Resume share, anything? Not yet. David, do you have something overlapping? The, if you're sharing a specific, an app, then if you have something overlapping it, that might be pausing and make sure that's on the front. Um, there's nothing overlapping it. Just a second. Okay. Let's stop share and try it again. Share screen. Should be this guy. All right, I'm, what do you see now? It's just a black screen that says David Warner has started screen sharing. Wonderful. So I can see the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting agenda and you cannot? Correct. Uh, that's not going to work. Um, Perhaps everybody could pull up the agenda on their own computer screens. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to work very well when I get to the slideshow. Um, well, actually, no, it will. You can do the same thing. All right. So uh, just a second. All right, the, the, the first thing that we have to do is to look at the minutes of the 519 uh, meeting. And I'm looking at the minutes, which you can't see. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, Maybe one of the other board members could share. Could bring it up and somebody else can share it. Zach, are you able to share it? I don't have it. Uh, okay. uh, Dennis Pugliesi, Ashley Pineda, and Lisa Raymond are co-hosts. If they could try to share their screen, that'd be great. Is Dave, so David Warner is also listed as a co-host? Yes, David Warner is also so a co-host. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so now I'm back. Could... Uh, Ashley, could you try it? You should be able to. Give me one second. I have, are you looking, I have it up if you want to add me as a host and I can try okay. mine. Wait, here comes Ashley. Okay, just okay. zoom in a little bit. That looks good. Yeah, okay. Not sure what happened. Uh, except it's the wrong meeting. 
Oh. <laughs> well, let's look at what we did last year. <laughs> that won't quite work. But the sharing worked, so. Yeah. We've come a long way since last year. Mm -hmm. I, ma I made you host, uh, co-host Chris, if you would like to sh try. Can try it? Ashley, do you have it up? You want to try it? Go ahead. Oh, is, that, is that me? I can see it. That's it. And you wanted the notes or the agenda? I have both open. Um, minutes of May 19th is the, yeah. Okay, so go to the minutes of May 19th. The minutes of May, okay, let's go back. Okay, good. All right, so this is uh, what we did last month. So uh, take a look and see if there's anything that you think is uh, not as it should be. Um, basically, um, well, the, the big deal, okay, so let's see, we, we you know, we, we welcomed Dennis, we uh, adopted the previous minutes, we reviewed the unofficial results of the budget vote, we, we won, uh, we reviewed issues with our publicity, uh, of our, on our publicity efforts, um, you know, there are a couple of outstanding problems, uh, I, 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 I I talked to Steve Lewis uh, on our staff, and the, and definitely the problem with no video on uh, on our cable channels is not in our facility. It's uh, it's at the town. Uh, there's a there's a, a cable access department. When I've uh, made attempts to contact them and haven't gotten response so far, the last thing uh, that uh, the last thing that Steve knew was that he thought they were waiting on parts. And uh, of course, you know, we went through the entire budget cycle with no uh, visual on our on our cable channels, uh, just just audio. So it, that's still the way it is, and uh, and we just got to push at that point. So to that um, point, David, if uh, anyone continues to have problems and has yet to voice their lack of viewability, they should contact Town Hall. Correct? Not the school district. I think that is probably a good idea because we can't do anything if. If it's working at our at our place, yep. Okay, so um, then we talked about uh, our uh, strategy for um, for rehabilitating the R.J. Bailey Auditorium. We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. Mr. Yep. Warner, you passed by the issue about the folks in town not getting the budget newsletter, and we talked about trying to figure out why they weren't getting the newsletters. Correct. Now I can tell you that we went. We're, we're going back to having a, a quarterly newsletter. So our next opportunity to try and monitor what's going on, it will be a summer newsletter that we're putting out. So we shouldn't wait till the budget newsletter to, uh, to see who gets it and who doesn't. We should do it as part of the summer newsletter. Yes, Chris. So since Mr. Simon is on the call, one of the issues that was specifically mentioned about that was the high point distribution. Maybe Mr. Simon, do you know if those bulk mailings, whether from the district or other entities, do they just get dropped beneath mailboxes and it's up to everyone else to pick them up or how are they distributed or are they, are they even I, off? I get, I get them uh, if they are addressed, to, they're individually addressed? No, if they're bulk mailings to resident A in, in unit A1A, for example. Okay, don't have the name, but has the unit number on. Or maybe not, just those just the bulk mailings. Okay. They, it, how do they get distributed in your complex? Okay, if if it's an address, it's placed in their mailbox. Okay, so in other words, what you're saying is we need to look at at our address list and make sure that it addresses individual units. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, oh uh, the if, other oh, thing the, uh, the other thing we proposed was uh, instead of having a bunch of current resident, uh, we we could try putting the person's name if we know it and say blah 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 or current resident. And see if that gets us uh, more traction. Yeah, because I get that I get mail like that all the time. It says um, current resident, and the important part is to have the unit number. So the mailman would just stick it in that box. Okay. So we need yeah. to check and see how the newsletters are being addressed before we do our next mailing. Yeah, yeah. 
And if I could help in any way, just let me know because uh, um, this is a large population here and we have to do a better job of communicating because um, uh, uh, many people here is not really attuned to what's going on in the school system, which I think worked to our detriment on the last barn issue. So it's an opportunity here to get better communications at High Point. Okay. And speaking as someone who lives in a different complex, I can say even when each unit is addressed, some of those bulk mailings, sometimes they get individually slotted. Sometimes they're just dumped in front of the, the set of mailboxes. It depends on the whim of the uh, deliverer, I think. So that's well, just, another, that's what happens in our complex. So I think um, well, we're never gonna have a size fits all solution here. So okay, do, they get, do they get dumped? Do, you, do all of yours, Say current resident. It go to my. I get plenty of mail that says current resident with right. my unit number. I get I get okay. that all the time. Okay. And Chris, uh, do it'll say ex person or current resident. But if it looks and they know, still get dumped calendars like the, the like the GCSD calendar. Sometimes it gets put in individually, and sometimes it's just put on the common area for everyone to take one. Okay. So. Okay, so, well, just let me know what the situation is, and I will do whatever I can to buy it to get it done. Okay. So do we yeah. have any idea who is responsible for uh, the mailing? There's a, who, who there's gives, a, who gives we, the we know that there's a communications committee separate from ours that's reporting directly to the superintendent, and, and that, that has the newsletter. Uh, editor on it. I know that there's a there's a third party who does the actual printing. Just the way the way that we go to print for calendars, right? So a third party is actually doing the mailing, but I think we're providing the list. Katie. Yeah, I was just going to add that um, uh, this was years ago, but when I came across, it was the budget newsletter. I live in a building also, and the carrier, it wasn't the right, I don't know who it was, but that day, the person did not put them in the mailboxes, left them on like a shelf. And I was able to contact the post office and like a person like above the Hartsdale. And mm -hmm. she was newly appointed at the time. I can't remember her last name, but I still have her email and stuff. So she made sure she was like, I sent her a picture of it and she was like, no, that should have been in the mailboxes. And she followed up and like ever since then, they've always been in the mailboxes. So yeah, I recommend yeah. that to people if that's happening at your own complex. Yeah. I, I can get you the info if you get in touch with me, I'll look her up. Yeah. Okay. But the bottom line is supposed to be placed in your mailbox, not supposed to be placed. That's correct. Okay. Anything else on that item we covered? And so that's that's a contact communications committee. Well, it's not a committee group. There, uh, Dr. I. Okay, then um, reviewed our strategy for re rehabilitating our RJ ba rehabilitating RJ Bailey. Well, there's a little bit of new stuff on that. We'll talk about that more tonight. Uh, reviewed the status of major upcoming projects. A, a lot of this, again, it's it's just the same thing in, in tonight's agenda. We just moved things up a little bit. Um, right, so you've got the fire hydrant issue, the phase one ventilation project, the energy performance contract, the security vestibule, and the mansion roof. Then we reviewed the status of a, a, a number of smaller projects. Again, we'll go over uh, a, a lot of the same uh, uh, high view third grade windows are, are a little more expensive than 46,800. Um, so we've got a better estimate now. Uh, but most of this is all, I believe, uh, in tonight's agenda, and we'll, we'll see what's changed. And then we talked briefly about uh, priorities for a phase two proposal, but we're waiting on the energy performance contract for that. Um, do you have a, at, at number nine at the end, committee members requested we resurface the driveway leading to the football field. 
Um, Mr. Puglisi, Puglisi, yeah. excuse me. Do we have yeah. any anything on that? I'm still trying to get a a second and a third uh, quote for uh, for the number. I have a number, but it's I need three prices. I'm having difficulty getting obtaining. You know, it's not a lot of money, but right. You know, so we need to wait way. until we get that third quote before you tell us the first one. Okay. Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Ne express the need for district grant writing capability. That's a Lisa Raymond um, issued. Lisa, do we have somebody who could be part time assigned to? I, I know we're managing grants. Can we write new ones? Well, we certainly could write new ones. We would just have to tap into some of our current staff that uh, would be able to do that. And that's in the business office? Uh, not necessarily, no. Okay. All right. With current staff. Okay. Then... Uh, requested information on the frequency of pest control. We knew the answer that that was that was monthly and more frequently if needed, and that was pretty much it. Does anybody see anything on the on this uh, on this set of minutes that needs to be corrected? Uh, Katie McGee's first name is spelled incorrectly. Again, I -E. thanks, Jessica. I was going to say that. All right, what what what's wrong with it this time? It's two yeah. e's instead of i e. I e. Okay. Zachary might be spelled wrong too. I don't know how Zach spells yours. If it's Zachary, C how do you spell your name? Oh, it's Z A C H A R Y. C H A R Y. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we'll make those corrections. Do I hear a motion to adopt these minutes as amended? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, we're good. Okay, back to the agenda. Okay, so Lisa Raymond, Assistant Superintendent for Business. We're in the finance section and uh, the two major things to go over here are the American Rescue Plan update and, the, uh, and then we'll talk about what we did at the audit committee meeting uh, recently and Chris can chime in at that point too, since she's, she's the committee chair. Uh, so Lisa, tell us about what's the latest and greatest of the American Rescue Plan. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you remember last August, Dr. Iverson and I did a, um, we were online and we did a presentation on the American Res Rescue Plan. Just wanted to give everybody an update on what's going on with the Education Stabilization Fund grants that were issued from the government. So if you remember, there were um, three grants. One was called the CARES grant, which was Corona Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Grant, which was in two parts. It, we called them the ESSER, which is Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief, and GEAR, which was Governor's Emergency Education Relief. Those were That was the first grant um, that was issued, and it expires September of 2023. We shared that grant with um, the LaFell School, Maria Regina, and Sacred Heart. Um, they do all of that by what is going on with the, um, they go off of your Title I, okay? So we got uh, awarded between the two, $312,747. And that money could be used for any kind of PPE supplies, childcare, if we were doing anything, um, in on campus, social emotional support, planning for and coordinating long-term closures, technology, professional development, and planning for summer school learning and after school programs. Mm -hmm. As I said, those funds are completely exhausted now. We have spent all of our share and the three private schools have also um, used their shares. The second grant that came was we call the CRISA grant, which stands for Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations. Those monies were to be used similar to what the CARES Act um, was used for. So we were awarded for the CRISA grant, a little more than $903,000. We filed the application in July of 2021 and we designated instructional salaries, construction improvements and ventilation, 
and some equipment such as air purifiers, fans, and Chromebooks. Since then, we amended that grant since part of the construction improvements were um, included in phase one, we took those monies and we redirected them for salaries to help with the learning loss. Then the last grant was the American Rescue Plan or we call ARP. Again, this can be used for the same services uh, or um, categories as the other two grants, learning loss, repairing and improving our facilities, um, academic, social, and emotional needs, professional development and training, and planning and for implementing any long-term uh, for any long-term closures and for educational technology. We were awarded a little more than $2 million, and we had to reserve 20% of that had to address learning loss. So um, we designated that for any additional learning support, after-school programs, social emotional learning, summer school and professional development. The remaining funds we designated to um, help us with our skilled school building improvements, specifically ventilation, if that money is needed after we know what we're using for phase one and through our energy performance contract, which once that comes in, then we will analyze that with Mr. Seba and um, see where we're at there. We haven't changed anything that we designated for the American Rescue Plan. Um, I will be filing a um, update with the state education department on um, funds that either have been used or planned to be used and if we've made any changes. So um, I will be doing that in the beginning of July. I just wanted to give everybody an update uh, and, a, and again, another um, review of what these three grants were used for. And if anybody had any additional questions, then um, you can either ask them here if you have them on mind, or you can always call me um, at 761-6000 and I'm extension 3108. Or you can always email me at lraymond at greenbergcsd.org. Okay, so I need to correct my agenda. So it looks like Krissa was the one that got changed, not ARP. Correct. We, Krissa was the one, David, that we amended. Okay. okay. And both the, so uh, we had approval for the Krissa grant. And then when we amended it, we had to wait for that approval, which didn't come until later in the year. And the American Rescue Plan, even though we filed it on time, there were many questions from SED, our uh, representative who reviewed ours, and it didn't get approved till later in the year. Okay. Uh, Mr. Simon. What was the total amount of awards that the district received? For which grant? For all of them, all together. What's the total amount? Oh, of I, I, you know what, uh, Mr. Uh, Simon, I, I haven't added them all together, but I can tell you the largest is the American two. Rescue Plan grant was was two million thirty one thousand six hundred and fifty one dollars. The CRISA grant was nine hundred and three thousand nine hundred and sixty seven dollars, and the CARES Act grants were three hundred and twelve thousand seven hundred and forty seven dollars. So that's one point two. 3.2, probably about three, between 3.3 .3 and $3.4 million. Thank you. Okay. All right, now the audit committee uh, met on 614 and reviewed uh, several internal audit documents. Chris, did you wanna talk about that for a minute? No, no, cause I don't have anything in front of me. Basically I can say what you've said here. We gave a preview of the, uh, the intensive reviews for buildings and grounds, and we probably have it here, buildings and grounds, which is facilities and operations and the human resources and payroll um, issues. Um, we identified different, there were observations, but no significant findings. Um, in February, we reviewed the draft internal audit report, both the internal audit report and those uh, intensive reviews and any corresponding corrective action plan will be finalized and submitted to the board for approval uh, in September. Um, so at that time, they will be posted on the website if anyone has any questions. Um, you can also watch the audit committee meeting that was recorded and probably is not yet posted. Okay. <clears throat> and, then, uh, and then for next year, we, we traditionally have two community members and uh, so it's time to do the recruitment again. So if, if people are interested, uh, that that will be coming. A, a volunteer opportunity will be coming. 
Yes. Does this mean that the current community members are not interested in continuing to serve? We have not had that discussion directly, but because they've technically been appointed for two years and have only really been able to serve for one year, I think it's time to solicit new uh, interested parties and, and they're welcome to submit their uh, interest again. But the, I think the, the goal is to keep getting new people involved um, and, and, and uh, see where we go from there. I'm, I, we haven't decided where the, uh, we haven't posted anything yet. I need to talk to our district clerk to see if they can email, if interested persons could email her um, that interest since we don't know who will chair the committee next year. Um, so once that's all set, there'll be something put on the website and an announcement will be made at a meeting, hopefully by the July reorg, the July 6th meeting. Okay. So then uh, any questions on that? All right, moving on to the five-year facilities plan. Uh, and uh, I believe that this was uh, something that uh, Dr. Allen brought up a couple of times and, uh, and the board policy 5630 lays out uh, requirements for, uh, for a, uh, an overarching five-year facilities plan. Uh, Chris, can you bring up the- uh, yeah, I'm going. Okay. So basically uh, all of the elements uh, I, I think that are in the requirements, there are state requirements and, and our policy uh, mirrors those requirements. And, uh, and there are various elements and we have a, a whole bunch of source documents that pretty much cover the bases. Um, but, uh, but uh, okay, fine, I had it in the directory as well, but- Oh, move, sorry. Move I did, way. <laughs> it, works, it works fine either way. So just scroll down a little bit. Okay, so this is, this, this is the facilities planning uh, policy. And so scroll down towards the bottom of this first page. There, back up to the numbered list. Let's look at that numbered list. And there. Okay, okay so, so it, it lays out what should be in this overarching document. Um, BBS has been uh, submitting a, um, a top level uh, summary uh, from this document with each project that they submit to NYSED. And apparently it's good enough because we're getting approval for projects, um, but um, but basically, what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to have a breakdown of each of the five year for for each of the five years in various categories. Uh, current and proposed new construction ranked in priority order. I assume that's like building a new building as opposed to number two. Current or proposed additions to school facilities ranked in priority order. I think our our uh, preliminary estimate on the ECP. Um, Buildings probably fits under that category. Uh, the ECP uh, addition to Lee F. Jackson. Uh, current or proposed alterations or reconstruction of school facilities, um, and, along with major repairs and major system replacements and energy consumption. So I think three, four, and five. We have that. Um, we have the uh, building conditions survey, and then we have, and then we prioritized every item in the building conditions survey, um, and, and it's pretty much in five categories: one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, so that would pretty much, you know, that's the source material for that. And then the energy consumption, of course, we have the uh, energy performance contract RFP, uh, which has details on energy consumption for all our facilities. So it's possible with, uh, I believe, the, uh, the data that we already have gathered to hand this back to, um, to BBS architects and let them make sure that we have an up-to-date document. And uh, Mr. Seba, do we have, uh, do, do we know what, what the requirements are once we have it? Do we normally post it on the website or, or how is it kept? I, I know it's supposed to be kept up every year, but, but what happens to it? Where, what's uh, reasonable and customary for most districts? So the document that we have been submitting on your behalf with each of the projects we send to the state depends upon the building, but it's basically the facility estimated expense forms that were created as part of the BCS, okay. which the committee has already seen. And if you remember the columns on that form, their priorities one through five, years one through five, <clears throat> it talks about major reconstruction, major repair. It talks about energy. There's a column for energy in there. Um, so yeah, here it is. So here's the one for Jackson. So in the left-hand columns are year one and it goes through year five. 
You can see the BCS, the Building Condition Survey report number there, the description of the item that we're recommending, and then those same classifications that you just read off, whether it's new construction, whether it's an addition, alterations, major system, major repair, whether it would fit within an energy type project like an energy performance contract, and whether we're thinking that would be financed via a bond referendum or a capital reconstruction work. So I think this basically checks all of the boxes of what you just had up uh, you, as far as your board policy is concerned. And this document has already been distributed and reviewed by the Finance Facilities Committee. So uh, you guys do have this document. Um, you know, I don't really know if a lot of school districts post that on their website or not. I think you do because yeah. I think it's in your facilities committee meeting minutes. So it's on there. Um, so basically that information is available to the public if they want to go see it. That's basically your five-year plan as of right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, do you anticipate that there's an additional work that we need to do or are we covered? Well, that would so be, I don't um... think there's additional work that you need to do, but you know, as additional items come up, like we're talking about the tennis courts now. Right. Those are not in the plan. So if there are additional items that you want to see added in there, then that's part of keeping that document updated. And it's a living document. It's not, we do this every five years and it stays the same. It gets updated each year by the school district with your priorities. Items can come out if you've completed them. New items can go in if you have new priorities that have come up. Uh, so that's, it's a living so document. So Some of the functions of the older draft of the spreadsheet uh, that, that we had out will, will be covered by that in terms of things coming in and, and, and falling out. Um, yes. Katie? Yeah, I'm a little confused though because BBS made that, didn't you make that list in the end of the spring or summer of 2020? Yeah, that information uh, was based upon our walkthroughs in 2020. Uh, that is the current information. So that if you were required to submit that, that would have had to have been submitted to the state education department as a BCS as of March 1st of 2022. So this is the information that we have been sending to them as your five-year plan. Your previous five-year plan would have been based upon your 2015 building condition survey report. And obviously that's already dated information right now. This is the latest and greatest information that's available at this point. And there's another wrinkle to this, which is that it looks like uh, in order to um, balance the load in terms of, of not having every district in the, in the state um, have this, this giant rush to come up with a new report every five years, they, they have, uh, they, they staggered it out so that uh, different school districts are on different lists so that each year, um, you know, you, you're supposed to have one fifth of the school districts uh, is supposed to submit their new report, which means when they started the thing up, your, your initial, in, in order to get in sync with that, it may be that you can't wait a total, a total of five years. So we may have to do some update work and then that's the next item. But before I go forward, Mr. Simon? Yes, uh, you know, five-year plans are good in any institution, but the key is that they are updated on an annual basis. So, I mean, corporations have five-year plans, but but you have to update that annually to and have some way of evaluating progress to make sure that you are still working on an active plan because as you indicated, things change. So you can't work on a plan two years ago if things have changed. So they, they should be a formal update annually to make sure everything is still on track. Now, I don't, you said it's reviewed annually, but I don't know how formal that is in terms of looking at everything, uh, where you are, to have you made a, uh, um, uh, a what adjustments you made, and then basically that's your updated plan. So I don't know, could you explain what that process is, that we are definitely looking at those numbers on an annual basis? 
I think your process is actually um, very good because Lisa Raymond put that into a spreadsheet right. and she's tracking each one of those projects as you go through. She's tracking the energy performance contract work. She's tracking what monies were used to do which projects. So I think she's kind of keeping that document updated on a fairly regular basis on your behalf. So I would say that would qualify as keeping that report updated. And then if there are new items that come up that aren't on that report, then those can be added in as well. Okay, so the, the, so it's ongoing thing. To, that's even better. That it's, okay, it's so we need to make sure that that spreadsheet uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't disappear. Okay, and we need to post it somewhere. Yes, Chris. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was trying to find that spreadsheet, but that might have not that might not have been something that we were given. It might have just been shared during the meeting. So uh, Fred said what I was going to say, but you've just added in the other part. I'd like to see that posted. So right. We, so so if all the playground equipment was on the on the building condition survey, and we got a whole bunch of new playground equipment, if there was, uh, I, I believe we did something for uh, was it the furnace at the uh, at the bus garage. Right, all of all of that, all the right. stuff that we did above and beyond. So um, they did that that spreadsheet that had all those tabs at the bottom. Yeah, yep. that is the one that you, you we should put on the website. That appears to be what we need. You know, we we may want to look at it a little bit more, but we should have a 2021 version and and then a 2022. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Steve, I'm just a little confused here. When was this document done where it says the condition of the play field is satisfactory? <laughs> Sorry, I brought it up. You mentioned the tennis courts, so I brought this up. Fully reconstruct tennis courts and fencing, 500K. Um, they, they consider the tennis court and the track satisfactory. That's so all I'm asking. Are. Your track, I, I didn't write this section of the report. Um, Joe Reddick of our office did. Uh, but for instance, your track right now is in satisfactory condition, but it's an asphalt running track. So it's a relatively hard surface. It's not an all weather track, which is a rubberized surface. And that's what the complaint is. Um, the asphalt itself is in good shape. So that's why it's shown as satisfactory. Uh, there are complaints about shin splints and things like that. What about the tennis courts? Uh, the tennis courts, I don't know. I can't speak to those. I don't know. Jim, wait a do you are you able to speak to the tennis courts at all? Uh, what's the question about the tennis courts? Do you know the condition of the existing tennis courts and what's recommended there? I mean, um, I, what's recommended? I know. Oh, we we can start tennis courts. <clears throat> there are asphalt tennis courts and there's some cracking and, you know, they need uh, either resurfacing, replacement. Um, you know, they're in, you know, a state where nothing has really been done with them for a long period of time. So the cracks are getting worse each year. Uh, we recommended to Mike Falcone uh, about a year ago that instead of going back with an asphalt surface, we could do something that's a, a hybrid, you know, grass and infill that we've been doing in a lot of uh, municipalities and other school districts or it's half the cost of asphalt. You can do it any time of year. And, um, you know, it's, it's a playable surface that plays very similar to asphalt. And you can just go over what's there with some minor repairs. Um, so we've had that discussion, knowing that there was, uh, you know, the state that the, that the courts were in. Could we go back to a uh, discussion sure, of Carol. spreadsheets and keeping the, uh, the plan up to date? We need to keep the plan up to date and not through having a separate spreadsheet. The separate spreadsheet is fine to track our progress, but the plan itself needs to be updated to reflect what we've accomplished and what still remains to be done. Well, that'll happen, I guess, every year when we sit down and say, okay, what's the next amount of money that you have available and what work do you want to get done? That will determine the work scope for the next group of projects. Um, you know, because right now we're, we haven't planned a big bond or anything at this point. So it's still up in the air as to how much money you want to spend in the next phase of work or the next plan of work. I understand that, but we're saying that the 
what we had in front of us was from 2020. So that document does not reflect what we've accomplished over the past two years. And right that's now, that, 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 that just shows the work that was progress. proposed. Excuse me? Right now, it just shows the work that was identified to be done. And now we're, we're going after a percentage of it. So the next document that gets published would show projects that have been completed. And when would we see that? That's the question. Once we bid and award the projects, nothing right now is even realistic until we know we got real bidders, we got prices in budget, and we award a contract. Once we have all those three things, then we say, then we have a real job. This is realistic. doesn't make sense to take them off the list now because right now we're in the, the bid process. We got to get contractors' numbers in. We got to evaluate those numbers. We got to evaluate the contractors. And then, then we can say, okay, here's a letter to the district that says, Contractor ABC is good, right? Uh, you know, give him a, the award of contract, and then we can, you know, write our contracts, and then we go forward, and then we can go back to the list and say these projects are now off the list. Are you uh, saying that are... nothing on that list has been finished in the last two years? That's not true. So there's a, there are a lot of minor items that have actually we've been winnowing away at it. Uh, and making progress on that. And when we've spent some money in the process. So I think you could put together an update of what has happened so far. And then uh, once this, this current raft of projects that's coming through, we're, we're the, are about to make a serious dent in it. And then an update beyond that, when those projects are done, should show even further progress. So the way the BCS typically is structured is that the district is required to bring in an outside architectural engineering firm to walk the buildings every five years. So that's what we did back in 2020. Um, the district then takes on the responsibility in the years in between, the subsequent years, to keep that five-year plan updated. And then at the fifth year, you then have to bring in an architectural engineering firm right. for a fresh set of eyes. Right. So, so the BCS doesn't, well, except in this case, the states are going to requ us, require us to update it in 2022 because of, uh, of how they, uh, they, they decided we're part of the batch that goes again in 2022. So we're going to have to do that anyway, even though it hasn't been five years. But right. then in addition to that, we want a separate document for each year that sh says, Okay, we did this this year. We did this this year. This year. Right. Okay, so we need that. Can David, you guys provide that? David, may I interrupt? Go ahead. I've, I'm sorry. I know there's people waiting in line, but to this point, I mean, here is, I think, that spreadsheet that, um, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which has been updated, but that was the one of the prototypes. And this basically takes everything in that BCS report here. And copies mm -hmm. it, shoot, I lost the spread, and copies it into the spreadsheet. So we All have right. what we started with. And then, of course, I've got this. And you can index to it. The description. And then it goes over and lists everything out so that we can show the progress of what is done, what remains to be done. So this could be, this, you I think, could, solves that problem in between the every five years for the BCS. This is. Right. So you could have one for each year, each calendar right. year, or a school, or just, school district year. Or, and say, or this is what got done by June 30th, 2021. Right. This is what got done by June 30th, 2022, and so on. So this combines the board and just list with, and with the to-do list and the, and the money spent. So this, I think, Ms. Allen, Dr. Allen, uh, I hope this is solving your query. Where is the column that says completed? Probably okay. So I'm sorry. I just I haven't. I just was goofing around finding this. This is from January, so I'm sure this is done. I just I have something random opened. Um, well, give me something that's been so completed Look for a playground. If, if it's complete, okay, Bailey. Uh, so if it's completed, theoretically, we would have an actual cost in there somewhere. You're not going to find the playgrounds on here because that wasn't part of the building. This is for the building condition survey. Right. But I thought we had playgrounds a playground for somebody adding in extra stuff. Oh, we didn't have that. Oh, that's that's a completely different spreadsheet. OK, so we well, we had one. We'll just have to like start out in September finding that and seeing if it's updated, I guess. I have all of that on my 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 computer. All right. But it's a it's a mishmash of the two, and I'm sorry for inter, uh, interrupting and skipping turns. Okay, so we need to do it, and the question is, by when? 
Is this something we could have in, uh, in say, September? If we're going to start the year out. That would be great. Yeah, by then we'll know what projects are awarded. Right. Right. Are, you ask, are you asking me, David, or me and the architects, or just the architects? Well, walking in uh, to the meeting, my impression was that, uh, that some form of documentation was going to be created by the architects. And you might have to provide them with some source information if it goes beyond the source, source of the scope of the BCS or anything that they've got. Um, but the, yeah, I wanted them to put it together because I, I don't know that you have enough bandwidth <laughs> to get through everything on top of everything else you're doing. Um, and, and so if there- well, I can, certain, I can certainly the work with them. Yeah. Yeah, once we know what the projects are awarded, we would contact Lisa and say, here's the award amount these projects, you know, we're now technically off the list. They're in construction, so we can share that information, and that'll appear as project completed or in construction or whatever. So, what we will be doing on behalf of the district is that you are required to do your building condition survey report in 2022. So, we will be taking the 2020 information, carrying that forward, and updating that for anything that's been completed or anything that the district lets lets us know that they want to have added to that. And right. then that report will be uploaded to the SED website as of March 1st, 2023, which is when the 2022 BCS is required to be uploaded. So we will be updating that report on your behalf for 2022. Mm -hmm. and then the subsequent years, the district would have to track that and update it. And Ashley? David, I, I think you have three people who have questions. Yes, Ashley? Uh, I, I think uh, Ms. McGee and Ms. Hack were before me. Uh, All right, Ms. McGee. I was going to say, let's let Megan go because she hasn't spoken yet, but then I do have something. Okay, else. Megan, go ahead. Okay, I'll take a turn. Um, I think what, what I'm hearing in this conversation is we have too many places to find information. And if we truly want to do this five-year plan effectively so that we can easily know what we have done, what needs to get done, and then the things when they were completed, that the, moving for the 2022 five-year plan, we should take advantage of creating one plan that does have a column for project completed and date completed. That way you can still search by year and say in 2022, we completed these projects, but it's all in one place. If you start splitting it by month, by year, you, you constantly have to pull the information back together to then see on the larger picture what is or what is not done. So I think we should stick with the five-year plan being the plan that we are always working off of. And we update that plan continuously in the five years until we have our next plan. And we can, you can still search for what you need. You can still look by you know, month or by year within that plan. But I think having multiple sheets, even you know, more than just a tab per building, it, it's really difficult to keep track of what has happened. And as a group, we're the people who know what is going on. And there's a lot of confusion as to what we did and when we did it and whether it was part of this plan or not. Okay. So one plan for five years, you're right. Uh, so we just, you have different editions of the plan, right? So, uh, I'm not saying that we have a plan that only has within the five-year scope what happens in a single year. I'm saying that uh, the, 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 the five-year plan gets updated every year, so there will be uh, additional versions of it going forward as we make sure we, we do some kind of uh, updating effort to make sure that we have a, a line in the sand when we're done with our fiscal year. Um, but I, th I think that that's part of the problem. I think it still has to be the one five-year plan. If sure. in year three, we find out, oh, there's four more things we have to add to that plan, it's added to that original five-year plan. Yes. And then when you do the next five-year plan, then that's a brand new. You may have to bring stuff over that we didn't complete, but then that's a brand new sheet that you're working off of. So like, Right now, Chris is showing us the 12722 project update. Mm -hmm. That's just for that date. It's its own file. 
if we have that on a monthly basis, it's going to be really hard to track things back. We need just one location that has all the information that we need. And I think I think I know what you're speaking about, um, Ms. Hack. Um, this was just, I put the date that this was. I wouldn't create one of these for every date. I would keep updating the same plan. We were trying to get the format together. Uh, and right. The format was changing radically from, uh, from draft to draft. So we were trying to keep track of that as opposed to you have a, a template and you're adding material to it. Uh, it's like, no, it, it, it's not complete enough. Add this, add that. And, it, and that's why you have all these additional drafts of uh, sp different spreadsheets. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So uh, Megan went first, then uh, Katie. Yes. Um, so do we have on that spreadsheet what was on the facilities expense sheets um, about, like I saw, we saw estimated cost, actual cost. Do we have a column about, oh, we have funding source. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because what I feel like is missing from the discussion is like you make a plan, like there were everything was identified in the BCS, $89 million worth in five years. Yes. But we never figured out where are we getting $89 million over the course of five years. There was, oh, we're gonna have a bond, that would be through bonds or the budget. But we didn't, like we've only gotten through phase one and into phase two. So, and we haven't, uh, 2021 has gone by and 2022. So like technically we're supposed to be into priority three items coming up. It's all like, it seems a little unrealistic that we're, that we're saying we would do all priority one when, when we have it. Do you see what I'm saying? So we, we do what we have to do. Thank out Like we, we did phase one and and um, the chrism, you know, this money, but that didn't, did that cover all the priority one expenses? No. So the way a five-year plan works with most school districts is that you're not gonna get all of the work that we've indicated in the buildings done in five years. So you reprioritize that plan every year and something might've been a priority three in, you know, in 2022, in 2023, it might be priority two or priority four. So you're going to move things around. Um, we prioritize it. Uh, we don't really split it up evenly by years. What we do is priority one or year one is anything that has to do with code violations or health and safety issues. Priority two is usually security and structural issues. Priority three is kind of the middle of the road and all the way up to priority five, which is more of an aesthetic type item. So that's how we prioritize it. It doesn't balance out year by year. And almost no school districts have the money where they can do all of those priorities at one time. Um, they reprioritize as money becomes available. They push things out. Uh, they defer things that they don't have the money for, which is, I think, what your game plan is and, and what Lisa has been working on with that spreadsheet. So that's how you would handle that. Ashley? Um, I, I'm gonna reiterate what Ms. Hack said. I highly agree with her strategy of how to approach the spreadsheet. Um, that said, I think what would also help is um, personally for me, putting dates, um, like an mm -hmm. annual process on this, right? We could pick whatever date makes sense. If it's, it's maybe early September, late August, when the kids are not around, if, if you know, between Mr. Puglis and Ms. Raymond, they could go through and update this uh, as a line in the sand. But the, the point is, I think what I'm hearing from everyone, and, and I agree with it, is if we don't continue conti uh, to modify and update the completion status and reprioritization in between the BCS exercises, then that's where everything gets lost in the sauce. Um, mm -hmm. I totally agree with Mr. Sieber as well. You know, $89 million. We don't have $89 million, but to his point, if we continue on the process, we were starting off strong. It's taking a little longer than it had, than we expected it to do between SED and everything else. 
but we're making, in my opinion, huge progress compared to what we've done in the last 10 years. So I think we need to keep that in the back of our minds uh, and just continue doing this incrementally. And I think we'll be in good shape uh, eventually. Thank you. Dr. Allen? We need to update this document by November of each year so that the board in December of each year can decide what they want to do the following year so that they can decide whether a bond needs to be done or how the budget needs to be adjusted so that it can be voted upon in May. And that should be done every year. Update the information by November so the board can make a decision in December so that that can be part of the budget process on the regular uh, voting schedule. No objection here. Now, uh, unless of course, uh, you think that uh, things are urgent enough to where you might want to do something. So if you have a bond mid-year as opposed to uh, as part of the normal budget cycle, is that does that work for you or is that, or is that an issue? We do not need to waste uh, money having a separate budget vote. We should be working in an organized manner so that all the issues can be presented to the voters at one time in May. If there's something truly urgent, yes, that has to be dealt with urgently, but we should be doing this in a, a, a structured manner so that we won't have urgent issues cropping up unnecessarily. Okay, so let me ask you uh, an, another question, and that is, uh, if I think that uh, as a result of, well, I'm hoping not to make any bond tremendously ambitious such that it, it would have the deleterious effect of the uh, of the large bond a few years ago. But if we had done that at the same time as our budget vote, it is very likely we would have tanked the budget in the process of the resounding no vote on the, uh, on the bond. So um, there is a certain level of risk to the budget if you put the bond vote at the same time. Does that change what you think or, or you, you feel the, the, the savings and expense is the most important thing? The challenge to the board is to create a bond proposal that will be acceptable to the community so that it doesn't get voted down. Mm -hmm. And you. we should save oh, okay. the money by having just one vote a year. Because I think it was like $20,000, I think, to have a special vote, plus all the work necessary in order to arrange it and advertise it. So it shouldn't be necessary to do separate votes. Mr. Simon? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, we're essentially saying a lot of the same thing, but we're not coming to a conclusion. I think we need to, you know, uh, make a decision how we're going to move forward. I think the excellent suggestion that we have to do it in an organized way. I think the idea of having one document that you update and you use that, excuse me, as a living document that you operate based upon that. And, and as a committee, we should look at what is needed and, and how we prioritize that. It's the board responsibility to figure out how to do it. That's not our job as a committee to say, well, we'll put off fixing the roof because we don't know how that might affect the, the budget. That's the board's decision. Our decision is to look objectively at the needs of, of the school district and come up with an organized way of how, how that should be scheduled. And if the board feels that that schedule doesn't make sense, then the board change it. It's not up to us to change that. It's up to us to be objective and, and, and lay out a plan to maintain the facilities. Thank you. Wait, I think. May I point Carol, out- did you, wanna, did you wanna say something? Okay, go ahead. The, our policy actually states that it's the superintendent's responsibility to come up with the plan. So I think we should be see, uh, acting in an advisory capacity to the superintendent. What we 
think she should be focusing on, but the policy specifically says it's the superintendent's job. Whatever, but I'm saying that doesn't change our responsibility of looking at it and whether we make a recommendation to the superintendent or the full board, that doesn't change our responsibility. We still do our job and, and our position is one of recommendation and we hand the information off. Okay, I think uh, I, I think that's probably key. I think we probably need to consult with the superintendent on what the dates should be, but uh, do we want to make a recommendation to her? So why don't we try and have the uh, BBS architect uh, put something together by November in cooperation David, with Lisa? David, I can't find my little hand probably because I'm driving this the screen, so I can't sure. move my hands. That's so I apologize for interrupting. I don't know if you can see me. Um, I agree with you again with what everybody's saying. Um, I do want to say that the re one of the reasons why this committee is a district committee and invites the public in is because while this is not the committee that makes the decisions and only makes recommendations, we do advise on what may or may not be successful in, in, in getting our recommendations accepted by the public. That's why this is a public, hopefully a publicly dominated committee or one of the reasons. So I just wanted to kind of remind everyone of that. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would like to recommend that November is too late. <laughs> I mean, we should ideally, ideally, you know, as projects are getting, you know, bids are getting opened uh, over the next few weeks, we, we're starting projects. Ideally, this is something that could be updated over the summer. And we're taking a look at the, at the, at the, the updated spreadsheet, which could be the essential, the key, a key part of that five-year plan in September or October, um, because around then probably discussions will start happening in the administration, not with this committee, but in the administration about, you know, we'll have the energy performance contract back and see what's covered there. They'll start formulating what they see as far as phase two. And I think this would be key information both for this committee and for them. So I'd just like to put in a plug for, I think November's too late. Thank you. Okay, so um, well, September was my original recommendation. So, <laughs> Carol, do you have any objection to September? No, not at all. Okay. Sooner Ashley. the better. Ashley. Um, I think, can, couldn't we do late August as the projects are closing up? I think if we do late August, that'd be better because that way, by the time we come in and we start the committee in September, we have what we need. Um, well, obviously, if we're going to review it in September, then uh, it would have to be done prior to the meeting. Uh, I should tell you that um, we're looking at the energy performance contract um, being uh, at a point at which the board probably would want to review it and not at the, uh, at their, I think it's the 20th, the September, to September 20th meeting. And that therefore we're, we probably need to schedule a finance and facilities committee meeting prior to September 20th, at which point we would review what we've got. So I'm assuming that the work takes place over the summer and then in probably, a, Maybe the, the week prior, maybe the week prior to the, the 20th, that uh, we would have something. Uh, so that's what I would shoot for. Um, I, I don't think it makes any difference whether you want the draft by August 31st. Is that what you're asking for? Or does it yeah, matter? And I'm, and I'm saying moving forward. What I'm saying, I'm, I'm not talking about the microcosm of this year in particular. I'm talking about moving forward. Let's set a, a line in the sand that says, okay, at the end of August, this is already completed. And then Obviously, this year might be a little hard to pull that off. We got a lot of moving parts, but at least that way, the entire administration team has something in the sand. They're shooting, they're, they're planning around that, right? This year might be a little bit of an exception. We know from previous meetings that, you know, we're still waiting on materials. We don't even know if the materials will be here in time for some of the aspects of the projects. So it'll be, some of those projects will be, you know, status pending. Uh, but my point is, you know, if we draw a line in the sand and say, okay, moving forward every year, by the end of August, we'd like to see this updated. Um, then that will carry us every year until the five-year plan gets redone every five years. That's my suggestion. Uh, 
Well, let's see. We know that the uh, the facilities department is active, so uh, 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 leading up to the opening of school, so there would be staff for BBS to consult with. Um, Fred, what do you think? I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, as you said, we won't have a final decision on the energy performance contract at that point, most likely, and some of the projects probably won't be completed because of supply chain issues. But uh, we can update the report as best we can by the end of August so that by the time we start the new school year, we have something to work with. Okay. So get us a draft by the end of August and we'll move forward. Any objections? Question. Yes, Chris. So the five-year facilities plan, which you outlined some of the documents earlier, and we're suggesting that the spreadsheet could be a part of that. It says it need the policy says it needs to be updated annually and submit uh, wherever I had the policy um, and submitted to the commissioner upon request. That's just upon request, right? There's not like a deadline to update that annual, the five-year plan annually, is there? Just so we can get the dates to coincide. No, and the state doesn't actually look for an updated five-year plan each year individually. Okay. So just it's something that you would just maintain in your own files. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. The only time we submit that is when we submit a project. We don't do anything in between. We update, you know, we attach an updated five year plan and for every year that we submit a, you know, a group of projects. Okay. Okay. So at this point, the Finance and Facilities Committee recommends that BBS, in cooperation with the administration, uh, Submit a draft five-year plan by uh, by August. Uh, what is it, thirty-first? To uh, the district for review. Okay. We need a do we need a formal vote or is it is there, or are we without objection? All in I favor. I would just well, I just like to add. Also, we're recommending this uh, one-year review. Sure. Okay. Further, we recommend annual review. Uh, five year plan. Want it in September or in August? It's got to be September. In September. Of each year. There we go. All right, good. So uh, <laughs> we're making it through the difficult part. Of course, it's 7:44, but we 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 hashed that out. Um, you know, okay. We've already been over what uh, what's happening with the building condition survey. Obviously, um, that gets updated. Uh, then we move on to okay, R.J. Bailey. The um, material, R.J. Bailey, the first few bullets are the same. I'm gonna try and speed up. Uh, we're gonna try to walk through this a little faster. Uh, the last couple of bullets on 527, New York State Assemblyman Tom Abenanti visited R.J. Bailey and committed $500,000 from New York State Capital Funds to reimburse costs for this project. That means we spend the money and then, uh, and then as a result of, of that, uh, we get the money back when we're done with the project. Um, the uh, project scope could include sound and lighting systems and an option for wood back seats, depending on costs and funding availability. Uh, the board had cautioned us that if we uh, spent too much money, uh, we, we couldn't afford to spend very much money on that and we should try and keep uh, costs set to a minimum. This is before Abenanti walked in, in, uh, into the, the, the scene and the response from this committee was, gosh, Let's find out how much these things cost. And if, if the board doesn't want to include it as part of that project, uh, we could do it separately or try and find additional funding sources or even donations to cover lighting and sound systems and that sort of thing. So we, as a result of that, asked BBS to at least provide us with some, some rough cost estimates for those things so that we know what we're talking about and whether certain methodologies would work and also whether given that there's $500,000 coming in that wasn't coming in before, 
maybe we could include things into it in as part of the project if they're not too expensive. Uh, and that's uh, Lisa needs to look at that given that we have to spend the money up front. Um, so BBS Architects, do you have any numbers for us on wood back chairs, sound systems and lighting systems for RJ Bailey Auditorium? I'll start out with the sound system. So, you know, because it's an elementary usually it is a, um, I don't know why my video just went out. It is a, you know, fairly basic sound system in there, but you do want amplifier, you want microphone jacks, you might want some wireless microphones, you want speakers throughout permanently mounted. Uh, so normally we would budget in the area of about 70,000 fully loaded for something like that. That would equate to about a $50,000 um, construction cost plus contingencies and fees on top of that. So you can do something that's a little bit less extensive than that. You can do something that's much more extensive than that, but that's kind of a middle of the road range for a typical elementary school auditorium. Okay. okay. And lighting? Or lighting and lighting controls. Again, I would need a little bit of input on that from the committee. So the range that I kind of came up with is anywhere between 75,000 and 150,000 on lighting and lighting controls. Uh, very basic could be slide dimmers that get put somewhere without any kind of a control system. Uh, I don't know how the circuits are laid out in that space as to whether we could grab those different circuits and put slide dimmers on them. Uh, the 75,000 is really kind of a small dimming kind of control system. The 150 represents where you would actually have a lighting control board that you can plug in almost kind of like you would at a, uh, a lower level junior high school, middle school, or high school type um, auditorium. So again, depends upon how you're going to use that auditorium. Typically elementary schools were more on the basic end, so more on the $75,000 end. So I just wanted to throw a range out there and get a little bit of feedback from you guys as to what you felt was necessary in that particular space. I have recollections of our starting to have um, some fairly decent uh, play productions in the spring of the year. And this is prior, prior to COVID. And I'm not quite sure what we did for equipment when we, when we did that. Uh, does anyone have any greater knowledge than I do? Uh -huh. Ashley. I was going to ask, um, you know, I, I think, you know, the lower end makes sense to me, but um, we once now that we have some information from you, Mr. Siba, I think it would make sense if we asked the administration uh, of that building, the, the building principal knows what's going to go on there. They have their plans. Let's ask them for some feedback to give Mr. Siba a little more direction there, because I suspect it's not going to be on the lower end to his point. But, um, you know, David, to your point, we need to know what plans they have, right, so that we can support it. Uh, so I, I think we should be asking them for input. Okay, and wood back chairs. So the uh, wood back chairs, I contacted our uh, seating vendor, asked him about that. I said that's not something that they stock or really do typically. So that would be considered a high end custom uh, mm -hmm. installation. So you'd be paying six hundred thousand dollars for your seats versus three hundred thousand dollars just to have a wood seat. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to you know, cut away what you can do otherwise by just having the wood seats. I think they're going to be uncomfortable. I know they'll be sanitary. You can clean them, but, you know, the fabrics they have today for the seats are, are cleanable. They hold up to, you know, the wear and tear. Um, I don't think spending the $600,000 on custom wood seats is something that, uh, you know, the public is going to want to say, well, why did we spend that much? We could have got nice, comfortable chairs for $300,000. So, uh, you know, it's something that the, you know, the industry really doesn't make. They make plastic seats like you would see in a stadium, but the wood seats, you know, in a, like a, uh, an auditorium like you have now are just not something that a lot of auditoriums are doing, so they don't make them regularly. It's a custom uh, setup. Okay. And then in terms of like real actual cost on, on seating, um, I can have spoken to the, the seating rep 
and we'd like to have a meeting out there so that they can actually see what's there in person, get actually accurate counts on um, you know, the amount of seats that we need to remove and what we what they'd like to go back with. I know we talked about trying to maintain the existing width of the chairs so that we get you know maximize the amount of seating that's in there. So that's something that they want to see if that's you know possible as well. So that's probably uh, you know a meeting that we'll have in the next you know two or three weeks. Well, they'll need to get in there before the asbestos start. The asbestos removal starts. Um, yeah, that's correct. So you know probably two weeks then I guess not next week, uh, but the part of the following week. Okay. All right, fair enough. So uh, we'll forward these numbers off to our administration and see what they what they have to say. Lisa, can you handle that? Uh, what, David. Yes. Uh, yes. Wood wood seats. I I think we should just take off the table. Uh, they indicate they they they're not re readily made. They're considered high end uh, seats. Uh, uh, I think that would be a big mistake if we go in and even consider wood seats. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I think that, that we need to ask about the, uh, the lighting and sound systems. And I think they should include, along with Ms. Rossi, Mr. McLee, who runs the lighting board and all of that tech stuff at the plays and everything. So hopefully they're consulting the actual end users. Sorry to jump in again. Well, right. There, I mean, if there's a projector that needs to be used and a screen, I mean, that's other stuff that's in addition to the audio visual equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Lisa? Can you make it so? Yes. I'll Great. work on it with them. Yep, definitely. I was just wondering if we could just get a couple people to see some, if we can get in to see something like Sleepy Hollow, uh, middle school, or some of these places, or maybe even one of the elementary schools around in Westchester that just recently updated and see what's going on there. You may see what their theaters are like and get an idea, you know, it's, we're not trying to compete, but at the same time, just get an idea of what the new elementary schools are doing. Um, you know, if we're going to look at high-end wooden seats and, and the majority of Westchester is not even doing that, I just think even the same thing with the soundboard and everything, you know, it's hard right now for us to understand exactly what an elementary school is doing. But I think if we can get a fair assessment from other schools and just get an idea of what, what they're doing, and maybe it'll help us make a decision that'll be fair and equitable. Mm -hmm. Okay, Megan? Um, I work at Washington Irving in Tarrytown, the third through fifth grade building, and I'm in that auditorium that they, I think at this point it might be five to 10 years that they redid it, mm -hmm. um, but I can get further information if necessary. That would be wonderful. I'm sure the costs have changed, but, uh, but you can at least tell us what's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it. Okay, any other questions on this item? Okay, the, the big four. Um, status of the major projects. Uh, Warburg Campus Water Lines. Uh, okay, BBS was preparing a, a submission for NYSED. There was a topography report bid in process. They were having trouble finding the third source. Any progress? Yes, we are expecting to have the third proposal by Monday in-house. Good, okay. So then when, when, when could you submit? Do you know? Well, once we have that, they have to go out and do the actual survey topo, which I don't know what their time frame looks like. My guess would be somewhere in the neighborhood of three weeks. And then it takes them a week or two to put everything on paper, get it over to us, and then we, once we have that information, we then have to transfer it on to the SED submission drawings. So we're looking at September? Um, yeah, probably September. Okay. Accept submission. Okay. Um, retired hard steel fire chief Again, feedback on water line. Yes, I'm sorry. Jessica Muldoon has her hand raised. Jessica? 
Hi, David. Um, I just wanted to share that the fire department in conjunction with some of the other departments in the area are gonna be doing a drill up at Woodlands to make to go through the process that they have in place in, any, in case anything did happen prior to um, the hydrants getting fixed. So I think um, for the community to know that not only do they have this plan on paper, but they're gonna be going through it to ensure um, that all the firefighters and, the, and their coordination is in place. Um, is that this summer or is that? Uh, they're gonna do it once school is out. Uh, they, okay. Yes, they're gonna do it on uh, Sunday, uh, the 23rd. Uh, they're gonna exercise the fire hydrants in coordination with uh, the surrounding fire districts. Okay. And David? That's, uh, that's the daisy chain. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just okay. my hand. Go ahead. Uh, can you find out the water source for the farm and whether that's a line that we didn't know about that we could be using? I think that was brought up at the last meeting. Retired Hartsdale Fire Chief feedback on water line sources. That yes. Yeah. Did we get anything back? Uh, the water, the water for um, for the farm over there comes from uh, our meter. Uh, our meter. The ECP, yes. Our meter. Yep, I'm virtually okay. certain the way it's. Uh, yeah, there is no other meter in between there and the, the that that water line for that little farm. The yep. Uh, Community garden. It's fed from uh, e ECP. Was that yeah. diverted and therefore our flow rate is. Uh, uh, no, that's that speeds the fire hydrants. It wouldn't it wouldn't have uh, much of effect of anything on that for that uh that little. It's virtually a hose, a hose tack off of our line that runs down the street. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um. Okay, and then back to the. Uh, did the retired Hartsdale fire chief, were you able to get any, any data from him? Uh, I have uh, two calls into him. I, I haven't heard back. I left two messages on his phone. I don't know if he's a, a snowbird, or but I did pull his house on uh, two different occasions. No response, two calls. Okay, fair enough. Um, moving on, phase one, um, Bibia, the, the $5 million uh, project to, to correct all of our, our, our uh, major ventilation issues. Um, all right, so we have the next page or so is a, is a series of, um, of completion dates, estimated completion dates or preliminary completion dates uh, of what's going to be happening over the summer. Some of it will obviously bleed into the fall um, and it goes uh, facility by facility. So if you wanna take a look at that, uh, you can see that a great deal of work will be done at each facility. I think the one has, looks like a few of them go out as far as November 30th, right? Early childhood program, substantial completion of electrical work is November 30th. Um, uh, Bailey Elementary School completion of electrical work is also November 30th. Everything else I think is a little sooner. A lot of it gets done during the summer. So that's where we're at. Uh, are, are these dates still accurate? As, no, of right not. Now, as of right now, they are, yes. We have not received bids back. So we haven't seen how the bid results came back in. We haven't met with our contractors. And once we start to select contractors and award and they submit shop drawings, we'll have a much clearer picture as far as availability of equipment. So as of right now, that's what we're projecting. But that is certainly subject to change based upon once we have a contractor on board. And did NYSED issue final approval? I know that the, 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 the sub portions were approved. Did the final project get approved? No. No, not yet. Not yet. What is there a holdup or is it just they haven't looked at the piece of paper? <laughs> um, the project manager is, you know, I guess contacted her several times to get the status and um, the response I keep getting is, you know, we review the projects as they are received and there is no priority order. So I guess it's whenever it gets through her list or pile that's on her desk. Okay. So, so when, uh, at what point do we have, does this stop us? 
Well, so we I've, might I've, have got, to... I've, got, I've got a contract here that says July 6th, award of contract, July Board of Education meeting, July 6th is, I mean, do we have until July 6th for them to officially nod and bless the thing or, or do we have to no. stop sooner? Technically, we should not be receiving bids back until we have SED approval. So we could end up having to extend the bid date by a week or two. Um, it's very frustrating because we got architectural and engineering sign off probably four or five weeks ago. And the project manager who has the easiest job out of all of them is just really checking the paperwork um, is the one that's holding it up. And they have a shortage of project managers up there. Um, they're supposed to have four or five. They only have two and a half. One of them is working from home uh, part time. And uh, so it's been very frustrating. We've been seeing five and six week delays from once we get approval from the architects and engineers until once we get actual final sign off from the project manager. So that's the situation we're in right now. We're kind of monitoring it. Um, hopefully we don't have to push, push the bids back. I know Jim reached out to them again, either yesterday or today to try and find out where we are and uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Okay. So uh, let me ask you then, uh, would there be a, a, a possible requirement for board approval uh, in the middle of the summer? Yeah. Would we have to have a special meeting? Do you have a second meeting in July or no? Uh, we we, we meet on the 8th. Okay. Sorry, David. That's true. We have a, <laughs> that doesn't buy us a very much time. No, it two more days. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so, yeah, that's two days. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, so all we can do is apprise the board that something may need to happen, and if we can get a quorum together, we can get a quorum together. Ashley, speak for myself when I say that I highly doubt uh, anyone on the board is going to make a big deal about attending a quick special meeting to push this forward. Okay. Uh, everyone on the board is very committed to moving these projects along. So you know, Mr. Seba, if if the project management team finally wakes up and says, "Hey, we got it to you at the end of July." I highly doubt the board would be the one to say, no, we can't have a special meeting just to move forward. So um, at least that's my perspective. Okay. All right, so these dates are uh, what they are and we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, fair enough. Any other good questions or comments on this? Um, okay, so after phase one, Energy performance contract RFP. Okay, so um, I think I I mentioned this already. We so so basically uh, the 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 field work uh, was supposed to be done by uh, by the first week in July, and then uh, and then uh, Con Ed will uh, solutions will put together a proposal. Uh, for the uh, the finance and facilities committee meeting. I, I did talk to the board president. And we kind of agreed that probably the finance and facilities committee meeting should take a crack at this thing before uh, we 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 have a presentation to the board um, because the, the the board tends to uh, to be very busy and we want to have a we want a group of people to take enough time to do a decent job of reviewing it uh, so uh, so uh, we need to have a meeting in early September. Uh, or early to mid September, and then uh, and then turn it over to the board for the the, the uh, 20th, or right around the the week of the 20th, when the uh, when the board meeting happens, and then we can go forward from that, uh, assuming everybody's happy. Um, any questions or comments on that? Is what I said uh, accurate, Mr. Waiting? Yeah, no, that's, I don't care. Okay. Yep. No, that makes sense. Okay. All right. So that's, that's where we're at. We'll, we'll try and schedule something for that. Uh, the Woodlands high school security vestibule, the, the money finally came through, right? We talked about that at the previous meeting. Um, the, this, the, the BBS recommended that we put the security vestibule and the mansion roof projects uh, together in as, as one project to kind of streamline things. And uh, you, would you like to, to, to speak on that? 
Fred or, or uh, Jim? Those are out to bid as well currently, and the bids are due back on the 30th. So it's about a week behind the phase one project. Um, so again, we'll we'll see what we get as far as our bidders, and then we'll reevaluate timeline at that point, depending upon the availability of materials. And we don't have any approval hurdle to get to for these, right? Both of these are have been approved? Yes. yes. So we we it, it may pull into the lead. Ahead yes. Of phase one. We'll see what happens. Okay. Right. All right. Fair enough. Um, smaller projects. Uh, Chris, uh, I, I, at about this point, there are a whole bunch of pictures that we should probably be looking at. I don't know if we can slideshow our way through them, and we can just narrate through this. Uh, um, so this is what ECP. This is ECP. And we're in the back. We're in the back and the, I don't know, can you see my air? Can you see my cursor? I can see your yeah. cursor. So this is decay is this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, which the kids do actually play, oops. They do play out here in this area. This is, so now we're just looking away from the shed. They do play in this area. So this is a safety hazard for them as well as this, I think there's some exposed, smaller exposed areas here with, with um, you know, splintered and whatnot. So the staff pointed out, pointed this out to us as something that if we could either just remove these or replace these so that kids aren't gonna be tripping over these and, and cutting themselves on, on these exposed um, splintery areas, that would be great. Mr. Um, Douglas? Yes, uh, that's, uh... Unfortunately, that's typical of a lot of the playgrounds. There, there are a lot of the, the wood is uh, in poor condition. I'd like to uh, try to replace some of these areas with the uh, plastic um, playground uh, borders that you've seen. Um, you know, mm -hmm. something that uh, requires uh, no maintenance. It, it's no matter what you do with a, uh, a six by six or so that you're going to have the potential for splinters. The wood is going to rot and decay after 10 or 15 years. And that's that's typical of what we have throughout the district around most of our playgrounds in the areas. Mm -hmm. They also mentioned that this the roof on this shed may or may not be um, depressed. So that might be something just to take a look at for, for future reference. Um, this is this is the immediate safety concern though. Okay. Okay, what's the next building? Let's see. Um, Chris, what... Just go through all the pictures and then we'll come back and do the list. Yep. Um, so there's a, there, there's more than one block of pictures. Okay, the the, the parking lot pictures. This is this is from Tracy. Um, so basically, we uh, we managed to uh, you know in the fall we managed to widen the driveway leading up to the gymnasium at Woodlands High School, and then prior to the budget vote, uh, we managed to get things paved, but not uh, but lines didn't get put in. The other interesting uh, problem is that. Um, there were curbs. So if you look at this area of the parking lot right next to the gymnasium, there was a driveway and then there was an area of a curb that followed the line of the, the line between the old pavement and the new pavement. And then you had two rows of cars and there was a demarcation before, between where the road ended and mm -hmm. the parking spaces began because one was up on a curb and now the curb is gone. Right. So the question is, uh, what do you want to do about that? I know, you, I know you're going to paint lines. Are you, are you just going to leave it slope like this or do you think there needs to be a curb? I, I would say uh, there's a, a huge amount of uh, water buildup on the other side. I think that part of the problem with that curb uh, was that the water run off, running off from behind the gym, it, it was just, it was starting to get stuck up against the curb and seep under the curb. And I was cracking the curbs from what I, I could ascertain, like coming through uh uh, so this is a drainage is, thing, okay. Yeah, there's uh, definitely, uh, after uh, it rained the other day, there was probably two inches of rain right behind uh, the gym area. Um, so we're going to have to look into you know, doing some drainage to uh, divert some of that water that comes off behind the hill. Where Are the you talking about behind over here? The, behind the big gym. Oh, so not yeah. here. You're talking about yeah, over and the then it, Yeah, just, and it just continues to run down that whole slope. Okay. So, so that's there. probably okay, actually so a good thing not having the curb there, but the, you know, we, we definitely need to get the lines there so you could you know, delineate where the roadway is and where the parking is. 
So then uh, does, okay, there. So does, um, does water then drain over to the, this other remaining curb and build up? And oh, yeah. uh, are, there enough, are there enough existing drains to take care of that? That seems to have enough existing drains. Typically the water doesn't set, um, you know, behind the, like the, the last car over there. That's about the lowest spot. And that's, that doesn't, I haven't seen that as a problem. That looks like a drain there. Yeah, I, that, that seems to alleviate, you know, all the, all the water that's running off that I could see coming from the, directly behind the building at least. All right, so you, you're gonna, you're gonna do drainage over there to the left of, of where the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, actually where behind the, the handicapped, uh, like here. Bars are. No, it would okay. be actually way around the back of the building. That's hmm. where the problem is. Over there. Behind the building okay. on the I other side of that. Yes. Okay. Right. Yep. All right. Fair enough. So uh, so lines it is, no curbing, because you don't want to make the drainage worse. Fair enough. That's if that's how that is, that's how it is. Okay, now RJ Bailey. Uh, this is the north end of the building. Um, people tend to drive around to the back and, and, and drop their kids off. And so this is something you'd go to if you were evacuating the building and needed to use that exit. Um, so uh, obviously it's not in very good condition. What do you think we should do? Uh, I did have a proposal on this one. It's just the amount of, you know, prioritizing. Uh, uh, I spoke with uh, the principal uh, over there, Shifa, and it looks like the one curb, if you're looking at, the picture of the way now it just there's a little piece that goes to the left that really goes to nowhere we were mm -hmm. just uh considering just doing away with that yeah. and uh just having the black top uh it, it, is that repaired. is that black area right at the base of the stairs is that some kind of permeable surface is it is that like uh recycled tires or what what is that that is a uh, black top i believe and the other in the foreground is concrete okay. it was concrete at one time but just it's decrepit Okay, so we'll we'll end up with the uh, uh, with a grassy area instead. You, all right, so that's well, the, plan. the left. But they were they were proposing taking this um, the front and going out towards the main part of the sidewalk, which would be over to our right, continuing mm -hmm. that and just doing away with the uh, the little section that goes nowhere to the left. Right there. This goes uh, nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, that just ends up in grass. That off. Yeah. This goes to the driveway. Correct. Okay. That was uh, we were proposing to you know replace that back to the sidewalk. And then your budget gets renewed July one. So, do you have enough money to do that uh, this summer, or is it will it be this later? Summer, when do you... this this summer? I'm uh, I would definitely not have enough to that. I'm I'm down. I have one more project, two more projects to do. Uh, probably uh, next weekend or so. Um, regarding the curbing where the uh, the water had seeped into the railing when they drilled uh, into the concrete. Mm -hmm. What would happen is uh, the water would pool up there and it would freeze and it would expand and it would break the uh, concrete on pretty much virtually every post. So um, I have a proposal uh, that I've agreed to to uh, mound up the concrete uh, after after the curb is fixed so that the water cannot collect in there and freeze and thaw and, and crack. So is that uh, the dry is that the divider between the uh, the two driveways in the back of the building? Correct, where the bus lane would be. Bus and, lane uh, closest, and then, yeah, okay. Correct. Also, the uh, drop really off. there's um, uh, some pointing of the uh, the steps. If you look at a lot of the steps, the uh, the granite on the, uh, which would be the south side, opposite of this, uh, the other side of the building from here. If you look, you could see there's uh, cracks where you could stick your hand under. You know, the water gets under there, and it's it freezes, and it thaws. And it expands. You, you don't want to get into the situation where you're going to destroy your steps. Um, lesser to the lesser extent, even where the uh, students exit, um, he was going to patch that up while he was uh, there. That's that's not as bad though. But you want to take care of it before it becomes a problem. Okay. While we're on Bailey, can I just ask that we follow up with the town on what's happening with the new plantings? Um, it's too late probably for the spring planting season, obviously, but ahead of the fall planting season, if they were supposed to follow up on, uh, I think they were supposed to add some new things, some some different plants this year. I don't remember yeah. the details right you're now. You're not talking about, about the car issue. wash, you're talking about us, right? The car wash, right. Mr. Oh, I can speak to that issue. Okay. Um, because I came before the planning board and uh, there was there, we did have plantings along there. So I don't, I don't remember, I can't remember at the top of my head what the plantings, the plantings were. Mm -hmm. However, yes, you could 
uh, follow up with Aaron Schmidt. That he is the deputy commissioner and he is a licensed arborist. So he could pull out those files and tell you what the. Uh, uh, what they should be doing. Exactly that should be doing. And to. then and then what we do on the other side of the fence, you know, then then I'll be up to us. But that 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 information is on record and you should just uh I'll give him a call, and uh, and in fact, he, he, you could go over there, but because it's uh, right next to Bailey, or you could ask him to uh, email you the um, uh, the plans for planting for that. Mm -hmm. It's all on. It's all public information. In fact, in fact, you could probably even go on the website, dig out the app. You know, you could find it on the website, but just. Rather than search it, just ask them to send it to you. I think the last we heard from the town is that the plants that were agreed upon in that plan, I'm sorry, Mr. Pineda, I jumped in. <laughs> but I think they didn't plant what uh, was agreed upon or something. I'm Actually, sorry. yeah, no, no, you, you started it because there's no problem. Um, what I was going to say, Mr. Simon, is during our previous two meetings ago, um, uh, Garrett Duquesne was on the call with us talking about uh, the project over at Elmwood and giving a summary of all that. And at the very tail end, he mentioned uh, that they were looking at making modifications to the number of driveways that are on Hillside Avenue for the car wash. And along with that, he had mentioned they were looking at re um, re revising the plantings requirement and all that. And there was additional information he was going to get for us. And I don't believe we ever got it. So with that seven assignment, would it make sense for us to just ping Mr. Duquesne and he might have more updated information? Um, there's no, the, the- Same department. Yeah, but I'm saying, I, I'm now, now I'm confused because uh, we, we gave permission for them to uh, build that car wash and they built it. So I'm not aware of any modification to that. Yeah, he said that they were looking at, he said something about they have seven current, there's like seven driveways or curb cuts on that side of the road, and they were looking at cutting that down to four. And they that did. As part of that, okay, and then as part of that, there was supposed to be a modification to the planting. He mentioned that. That's right. And that should be the term, that's, those are the plants. When, yeah, well, yeah, that should be the current plan. Okay, maybe he have, and he's having some initial, uh, discussions with them that hasn't been brought to the planning board. That's a possibility, but I know what I know what we approved, and 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 um, yeah. So I'll, I'll take a note and to to ask them what if there's any other additional additional plans for the for the car wash. Because yeah, because it was cut for down from seven to four. Yeah. Okay. I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Mr. Morton. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've been following it for almost since a year and a half. <clears throat> and again, it, it's showing exactly what I've been saying for years. We never follow up in the district. We let people get away with things like this. And we've got to figure out a way that, you know, we take care of the kids. It's always two to three years later, we go, oh my God, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So even, I don't know if it's facilities or what, but we've got to get a handle on letting everybody have their way for the sake of their business and their money. And they don't care about our kids. But meanwhile, we got a, a town board, a facilities board, a community board, a security board, everything. And the kids are still sitting there with these big, uh, dryers and all these people right there in the middle of the day, five days a week, doing their cars. And all I'm saying is that we got to do better at, you know, keeping track of these things. And, uh, you know, it's a year and a half later, and no planning, nobody cares. Uh, oh, it's just a bunch of kids. That's how the, you know, the community looks at this and you want them to give us bond money, but they're saying you don't do the right thing. So all I'm saying is we've got to step up our game. Well, anybody else? One, yeah, one of the things, just procedural wise, 
when something is done, residents within 500 feet is notified. So the board is notified about that planting. Then when we have hearings, you know, we have public hands, the, the, the contractor comes in, they give you all this story about why it's the greatest thing for the community. But then we also have public hearings and we want to get input from the affected parties. And then based upon that, we make a decision. Obviously, if the people who knows most about the property is the property owner, you know, we could be on the board and say, oh, I'm familiar, but the people who are there every day. So it's imperative that if something is happening that affects your school, you have to come to the planning board meetings and raise your, your uh, um, uh, concerns. concerns. And then those concerns we put in, uh, when we make a decision, we we outline you have to do a b c d e f you have to do those things and if the developer does not do that then the neighbors are the first one to know or the school board should be the first one to know and you come back like i said you you speak to the planning department and you file a complaint so the thing is what we need to do is to follow up on the plantings. I will do my best and figure out what's going on, but you have to follow up uh, uh, with the planning board with the, with the, and say, hey, this is unacceptable and make an issue of it, you know? So even if the current plans, they're meeting the current plans, you could still go back and say, it is providing a nuisance. And you could still have an opportunity to revise those plans if you could demonstrate that it's 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 providing a nuisance. You could still go back. So you could, so it's not so even if, like I said, you could still go back and raise objections. Megan, um, I just want to say that I share Mr. Morton's or Steve's um, frustration because. It has been over a year that we've been discussing plantings on this border. And if it was in the plans from the beginning, there is no excuse as to why something is not planted along the border. And I understand that we have to follow up and we are trying to figure that out, but we do not know who to contact to get it done quickly. And this is our problem. We cycle back to this conversation because we do not know who to contact in the town to get things done so that they are completed. And I, I think that's- I just, excuse me, I'm sorry. I think that's the part that we have to fine tune. We have to figure out who do we contact? How do we get it done? So instead of five conversations, we have one to two about something and time is not passing. I just gave you that name, Deputy Commissioner Aaron Schmidt, who is the town's licensed arborist, uh, 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 rather. And he was the one that takes particular fine, uh, 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 takes a, a attention to the landscaping. That's part of his job. So just call him up, ask for Aaron Schmidt. In fact, Oh, I don't have my phone. We can, we can, we can find it. Uh, the, yeah. the town, the town website has all yeah, that information. Just call them up. I think I have Aaron Schmidt's phone number. Yeah, just call them directly. And, okay, and, that's and then the we part. figure out who, what, how uh, or what uh, member of the uh, district can file a complaint if we need to do that. We, we did do the uh, the uh, we had a board member uh, go over and speak directly with the owners and were, and there was, a, there were promises made. Oh yes, yes. When spring comes, we will certainly do those plantings. So plantings. So, uh, we've tried being nice. So, uh, all right. So the complaint is the next stage. No, the first find out if, if they fulfill their responsibility, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they did quote, uh, let's say they did fill their responsibility and and that's 
that's what's all that was required for them to do. You could still go back to the planning board and 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 say that yes, the plans look good on paper, but it did not solve the problem. You need to take another look at it. That's the process. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. Did we complete our slideshow? Uh, there was one more slide, and that's we fixed something. Um, Dennis. Is that the um yes those are the uh, amphitheater steps at uh woodlands uh, high school middle school complex okay so we patched that at least good so that's it that's a done deal all right so now back to the list dennis can you walk us can you, uh chris bring us back to the uh, smaller projects list and dennis just walk us through this list ecp main building ECP main building. Okay, I, I, I checked on the uh, warmer. It hadn't arrived yet. I have a, uh, a new arrival date. They're telling me uh, about July 17th. Okay. Um, so the lead time went from uh, 30 days to it doubled or so, but yeah, we'll see what happens. They're telling me July 17th. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. We, we looked at the exterior work on the ECP. Main yep. building. Uh, Lee Jackson, we're still on schedule. I spoke with uh, Crown uh, to uh, start the uh, boiler uh, coil. Um, July, uh, July, Monday, July 27th, I believe is the date. Um, the asbestos removal is still on schedule for uh, July 6th. Um, the contractors are uh, uh, sending me out the, uh, the postings that have to go up before. Uh, the 10 days before, uh, we're in contact and the uh, Millbourne flooring is scheduled uh, for uh, July 18th. That's still on schedule. They've uh, confirmed that. Um, we're having uh, meetings with the camp a site meeting. Uh, just a visit, you know, in addition to speaking with the camps, just to go over the logistics of where, how everyone's going to use alternate uh, access to the building uh, during the abatement. So the camp knows now. Good. Uh, camp knows, and we actually have a site visit planned for uh, June 21st, um, uh, 10 a.m. at Lee F. Jackson, and also uh, here at uh, Woodlands at 10:30. Okay. In addition to that, I also have a, a meeting tomorrow evening with at Bailey with the um, uh, Theodore Young Community Center. That's uh, Cordio Valenzuela, just to go over some logistics there. Um, because uh, the gym is scheduled to be replaced there, but not till the uh, middle of the camp or so. Mm -hmm. But just the, with all the construction going on, uh, you, I think it's good to uh, walk around and actually see the site and what's what's going to be going on. Okay. That'll be uh, tomorrow evening at 4 p.m. I'm going to meet with him. Okay. Highview? Uh, Highview, uh, I have the uh, proposal. I submitted it to... Uh, Mr. Siva and uh, and BBS uh, uh, office. Uh, there was were some. There's a schematic of the building outlining the uh, nine rooms that were on the proposal, uh, with a little bit of uh, information on how uh, the windows were to be constructed, uh, dimensions, uh, something uh, regarding if uh, yeah, the thickness of the glass. Um, and they were uh, going to go over that and see if it's up to code. And, Dennis, uh, would you be able to uh, talk to the contractor and have them submit some cuts on exactly what windows they are proposing there? Because we want to take a look at specifications, make sure they need New York State code. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to them for that information, sure. Thank you. And uh, I think we have a budget code transfer, Lisa, to fund this thing is that correct you know at an upcoming board meeting it well once we know what the final cost is we need to wait till um bbs looks at the uh windows that they're suggesting to make sure that they're up to code okay bailey go ahead um mr warner david uh, megan, megan Black, to, sorry um, sorry, so I was backing up to LFJ with the camp. Um, yeah. I was the one who informed the camp that there was the abatement 
at camp orientation because they didn't know. And we had talked about this at the main meeting that mm -hmm. this was happening. And I know, uh, Mr. Police, that you didn't know that camp was happening as soon as school stopped, uh, finished. Um, but I don't, I don't understand what the process is for like informing the organization that's renting our school space so of construction within the building. It's like when, um, when we looked into it, the man that runs the program, he did know about it when we spoke with him um, Wednesday, Wednesday, was it, uh, Dennis? Yes, I believe he had some uh, uh, contact with uh, Patricia, the principal. I believe that she had uh, gone over, uh, spoke to the, I guess there's a couple of different, uh, there's, a, I believe Ruth is one of the people. Um, Joe Lucchese is another one. There's, a, there's a, uh, and, uh, and uh, another coordinator, but I was, I was informed that um, the principal had had contact with the camp. Well, but when? Because during camp orientation, which was the first week in June, the um, camp director, Ruth, who runs all the camps for the direct department, didn't know. And then the actual um, Camp Kidco, the camp that happens at LFJ, they, they're planning all of their logistics for the camp. Um, they had no idea, and they use the front portion of the building significantly in their camp. That's how they run most of their camp out of that. Um, so it just... It was very disappointing that knowing we had had the conversation already, that it hadn't, the communication fell off somewhere along the way, but also that this is a new crop of parents in the Greenberg community, our youngest families, they're getting information that's completely inaccurate. And most of our families that use our Greenberg rec camps are the families who attend GCSD. So the, the idea that the rec department and the school district communication is not fluid um, it doesn't look good outwardly, publicly, um, but it was it was upsetting to the director who was telling you about the day. And as I'm listening to her explain things, knowing that that's not what parents are going to expect at all, because it's going to have to look significantly different when the abatement is occurring. And then, you know, let alone the fact that it's an asbestos abatement. I think there's going to need to be support around that conversation that it is a safe place for the kids to be. You waited till school was done, rightfully so, but you still have the kids in the building most of the day. And they're just, it would be nice if there was a conversation to that, whether the district supported it through the rec department, but that there was actually a flow of communication. Okay, yeah, I have, I have had several conversations with uh, Joe Lucchese. Um, I don't know if it's uh, inter-office miscommunication, a lack of uh, enough communication from uh, you know our from the school district to the camp. But I do have a, a meeting uh, with them to to go over the logistics of exactly how we're gonna what's gonna be happening, what doors are the students are gonna use, the bathrooms, and all the logistics of the uh, camp. Yeah, you know, we have I'm scheduled to meet with um, Joe and uh, Ruth on the 21st. Okay, is the is the cafeteria going to be available to the students or no? The cafeteria will not be available to the students. That whole section of the building is going to be off limits. Okay, so like that's that's crucial that I'll I'll reach out to the rec department because they inform us that lunches are refrigerated daily, and that's a big driving motivation for parents that oh, at least I don't have to worry about keeping things cold in the summer. Um, so I will make sure that com is communicated clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, not to beat this to death, but uh, so the, the normal chain is a decision gets made to do an asbestos cleanup. The, uh, the, the uh, decision moves from the central office staff to the principal. The principal then informs the, the camp. Is that what happens? Or well, I know that the, I know that the principal has a, a conversation with them, but um, then it would be then I guess it would be decided who else is going to um, call the camp. I believe that it is the principal who does touch base with the camps, the different camps to let them know and the Theodore Young Center. Okay, so that's what you have to clarify. You have to determine whether or not your facilities director is responsible for director, directly contacting the camps or whether you're running it through the principal and, and then you have to enforce whatever that whatever that decision is. I think for the future, 
I think it's it would be better best if both parties. That way, we know somebody has done it. I will. Okay. Agree. Okay, Chris. I just want to say I did visit Jackson. I don't know when. Weeks ago, probably in May, maybe even late April, and and had a conversation. I was there with uh, President Mayors and Miss Simone. We were talking about camp, and Miss Simone did reassure us that she'd she'd communicated uh, some information to the town. I don't know who in the town. So, so I just want to leave it there and move on. So, so okay. Doctor Allen, camp is over on August the fifth. Would it be possible to do all the work between August fifth and the start of the new school year? No, the. Uh... There, there wouldn't be enough time with, between the abatement and the, uh, the amount of work of uh, uh, the corridor. It's, it's an extensive uh, abatement. Um, there would definitely not be enough time for uh, the building to have uh, the abatement and the tile put down in, before the students were back in school. So what is the plan? What is the plan, sir? Yeah, what's the plan? You say that. So okay. how are you going to do it while school is in session? Oh no, the, the while the camp is in session, we're gonna we're gonna wait until July sixth after the students are out, and just the camp is on another floor. Um, July July sixth is when the abatement is actually going to start, and it's going to take uh, approximately two and a half weeks before the final okay. air samples come back. But they will be isolated on a, on a separate floor using a separate entrance to the building. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bailey, I think we talked about, okay. Yeah, next electric. I have not seen a uh, proposal for those, uh, the upgrading the electric yet. I know that the air conditioners have uh, been installed. Uh, five or six air conditioners have been actually installed uh, this week over at Bailey. Um, there was a couple of rooms that didn't have them. Now, I believe that all the rooms have the uh, air conditioning units. Um, the power is an issue over there still, but the uh, electric, the electric is, Usually sufficient. Occasionally, a one break will trip, but you know, on the, on the hot days, the uh, air conditioners have brought relief to the students. Right. So the air conditioners are in. This particular bullet is about a problem that happens with the uh, the breakers being tripped. So that hasn't come back yet, right? That that uh proposal has not come back yet. It's just, I guess the pro the problem is uh when the smart boards and all the air conditioning units are running. When the compressor kicks on and everything's going, it might trip the breakers once in a while. So we're looking to uh, upgrade the electric. I haven't seen the proposal uh, yet. Back yet. Okay. Uh, no, ask to unmute. Okay, go ahead, Woodlands. Uh, the large gym uh, it's scheduled for uh, replacement uh, over the summer. It's a, it's a big abatement job. It's gonna take uh, four weeks at least. Uh, we're trying to schedule that as soon as possible uh, you know, with the uh, abatement company filing the job with the state. Uh, and then after I, I do have the wood confirmed after the abatement is done for uh, uh, middle of July. And to put the uh, wood floor back down after the abatement, it's going to take uh, several weeks. So it's, you know, uh, a lot of the stars have to align to get the, uh, the gym uh, replaced and put back, you know, before the students come back. Okay. And I, I had a correct request from uh, Tracy, from the pre board president, confirm that volleyball lines are included in the project specification. Uh, yes, we have a meeting actually tomorrow morning with um, Mike McCoy and Matt Smith with the Millbourne. I believe that they're going to propose uh, putting three volleyball courts in. Um, I guess the plan is so that the community and others could use them after hours. Um, and then we're going to go over the, all the lining and the uh, paint markings uh, tomorrow morning. Good. 
Katie? Yeah, just um, has there been confirmation that the town, the camp that's run at Woodlands is aware of the abatement with the gym and there's a camp yes. star? Okay. Yes, um, I have spoken uh, with the uh, camp and actually we have a walkthrough. That's the other part of the visit on June 21st, just to go over the uh, site logistics at uh, um, on, on uh, June 21st, we're going to actually walk the site, but I have had uh, numerous uh, calls with uh, Joe Lucchese and the camp. They are definitely aware of the woodlands. That, that was out of the, um, out of the, the main gym was off limits, but uh, the small gym, uh, that should be available for use. Okay, thanks. Okay, other questions or comments? Yes, Chris. Sorry, so it sounds like you're keeping in touch with Mr. McCoy. I know some of the teams do unofficial workouts and use the, and just for the public who uses the weight room, when that abatement is being done, will that pathway up to the weight room be open or is the weight room closed over the summer? Uh, they plan on using the fitness room all summer. Yeah, that shouldn't affect anything. Uh, the gym will be in containment. Be and, uh, okay. yeah, they'll have uh, plastic off and uh, that shouldn't affect anything of... Uh, you know, the hallway that would go over to the other gym, that'll be contained uh, the whole right side. If, if anything, I think, I believe that the uh, abatement contractor is actually going to put something, uh, his tenting area outside of the gym on, on the parking lot side, outside okay. of the building. Gotcha. And so there'd still be access to some bathrooms and that other near the small gym. Correct. Uh, at least the girl side, uh, definitely the other side. Okay, yeah. and then the last question again, you're keeping in touch with Mr. McCoy. So if things get delayed, he'll have time to make arrangements for plan B for like volleyball practice when that starts on August 22nd. Correct, I said, yeah, hopefully yeah, you don't want to be the one that says, okay, we can't have uh, <clears throat> gym classes or anything, but he says typically that's the first couple of weeks. It's right. not a, a major deal, but I, I think it's a major deal. The, the gym's not ready by the time school opens, believe me. Mr. Simon? Yeah, not directly related to the master plan, but related to Woodlands. Uh, there's illegal uh, motorbike racing on your track at night. I, three, at three different occasions, I reported that to the police, and that, that seemed to have stopped. But uh, uh, about uh, last week, they had a major uh, fire uh, fireworks display going off in uh, in the track there at Woodland. So it is an ongoing problem with people using that facility after hours. Uh, and it's, it's a particular concern because as I said earlier, uh, one of the issues with High Point that they came out in mass to vote down the barn. Uh, I'm on the board now, and it's a major upward battle for me to uh, get the residents here more tuned to what's happening in the school district. I think we have a good story to tell. That's why it's important that we get these mailings out to the residents here. Uh, I think it's important that, uh, you know, we have to do a PR with the residents here because it is a gated community and they don't look at anything outside the gate. They do, residents don't even come to planning board meetings. So it's a certain mentality we have to work on because it's 550 units, probably 800 voters here. And we have to work and, uh, and see how we could turn that around. And if you have motorbikes running at night, making all this noise of fireworks going off right next door. That just doesn't help. It's a noisy the neighbor. Yeah, it's not noisy. And the other thing that we need to look at also are these vines that climb up the trees and kill trees. Now, there is a whole group of trees on right on the border that's gonna eventually affects the trees at high point. So again, the thing will be, hey, they're killing our trees. So these are just things we have to be aware of and, 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 and try to 
turn that around. So instead of getting 700 or so people voting against future bond, we could get 700 or so people voting for it. But it requires good communication and doing just these little things to make for a better type of relationship. So I just want to bring that up. So is that an annual summer clean out of vines along the, uh, along the border? Well, it, it's a problem through all of Westchester to have these vines that, that they get onto a tree and then maybe in three or four years, they kill the whole tree. And what has to be done is that you have to go and cut the roots of these vines. You just cut the roots. And so mm -hmm. to kill these vines, so because, you know, five years or so, five, you know, yep. you see them all over Westchester. So problem is not unique. I'm quite sure you have some trees on your campus who that's suffering the same way, but it, it's a, it's the problem all over Westchester. Okay, other comments or questions on this topic? Bus garage, consider repaving an electric vehicle charging station in long in long term plan. That's one of those grant ideas, uh, Lisa. When we were talking earlier about uh, needing a, an external source of funding for something, that's something to pursue. A uh, community complaint that some bus hoods require repainting. Uh, I can pass that on to Mr. Gunn so he could pass it on to Royal Coach. Ashley. Thank you. Um, Ms. Raymond, the other, the other part to the electric vehicle charging station, it wasn't just um, looking into electric vehicle charging. It was more importantly looking into the buses themselves. Uh, because the grants that are being offered by New York State right now would offset 100% of the fuel costs used by those buses. So let's say it was, uh, I don't know, $2 million in electricity that those buses would use, they would actually uh, reimburse us that, and it would no longer be a cost to us of just diesel fuel. So that, that I don't think that was covered properly by that point. So it was looking at vehicle charging station, obviously we would need to charge the buses, but it was also, hey, what could we do to get the buses so we could get the fuel costs? And instead of spending those $2 million, the $4 million in fuel that we spent today, we could spend that on our buildings or something else along those lines. Okay. Katie? Um, yeah, I, as far as the paint on the bus hoods, I was speaking to Mr. Gunn about something else today. I thought he mentioned that, like, their Royal Coach has new buses on order. Mm -hmm. and and it, uh, they're, but not the whole fleet. We are getting new buses. Okay, but I just, they might respond. It might affect whether they're going to go repaint things if they're going to be replaced very soon or not. Right, correct. Steve. Uh, yeah, just adding to what everybody's saying, uh, maybe just go directly to Lisa. Uh, there are a number of politicians out there, especially upstate, who are pushing to get many electric buses for their district. And I've mentioned to Frank, Frank Gunn over a year ago about this. Um, and I really think we need to be aggressive about this. Uh, if they're getting new buses, and we're going to be the only one in 10 years who's got a gas bus, I mean, the, the residents are going to be like, what, what happened here? So I'm just putting it on record that we need to be aggressive about it. We've got plenty of room over there. Maybe Con Ed can swing something for us. It, it, there's no excuse for us to be ordering new buses through Royal Coach, and they'll be the only ones out there because everybody else is going to electric. So I hope we'll take a real deep look into this and not be the last district in their county that has an electric bus on their station. Chris? So, so from my understanding, Royal Coach is the provider that we currently have a contract with. They're responsible for the buses. However, we pay the fuel, right? And that's where the charging station and the fuel cost savings through these grants would save the district directly. If Royal Coach is responsible for replacing the buses and there's a state mandate or a state uh, law that was passed saying that by X date, I think 2035 or 2027, 
there have to be electric buses. Do we need to put something in our contract with Royal Coach? And I don't know when that's due for renewal or are they gonna be held to that um, requirement by the legislation as well as the school district? Because the last time we asked- They will be held, for, they will be held to that legislation. Okay, because last time we asked, they didn't have plans necessarily to purchase those electric buses, but I don't know if they're now updating those plans or communicating anything new to you on that timeline. We have a meeting with them next week, so I will ask. Okay. okay. And are we, what year, just out of, uh, sorry, i have to put you on the spot, but are we in year one, year two, year three of their contract? Where are we on that? I don't, I can't tell you the exact year. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, phase two, uh, as, uh, as previously described, we are, uh, we are waiting for the outcome of the energy performance contract to, uh, before we put forward uh, phase two, I'll repeat, uh, as I have repeated in each meeting, priorities include ventilation, building envelopes, building condition survey priorities one and two, and ECP classrooms. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, I can see it's now 8.52. Does anybody have any other concerns they want to raise before we adjourn? David, I just had one other item that was brought up at the last meeting. Somebody had asked to us to look at paving the road that leads to the football field at the high school. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we looked into that and the fully loaded number, including all contingencies and fees, is approximately $350,000. Okay, and Lisa, you're gonna take that back and see if we have the money to do it. I maybe add a fence so the motorcyclists can get on the bus here. <laughs> no, I'm serious, yeah. Okay. But okay. I, I would like to piggyback on what uh, Martin said, that we have to be aggressive, regardless of how many years we have in the bus contract, we just tell the, the bus company, hey, we need to move forward and when you know and when contract comes up we'll be looking at those companies who are, are moving uh, not waiting for the state to push them who are moving and you just lay it on the table for them yeah you, we can't do anything now but if we tell them up front that's our intent we're going to go to electric buses and if, and if you're not gonna get on that train, we're gonna leave you. So you tell, your, you tell the bus company that now, even if we have two more years on the contract. So we, we, be, we are proactive. Don't wait until say, if the state is gonna push them or not. Okay. So yes, Chris. If you're gonna follow up on that, go ahead. I wanna go back to the road to the, Football field. Uh, you do the road. I'm going to talk about scheduling meetings for next year when I when I come back on, and then I'm going to adjourn. Go ahead. Oh, the 350 thousand. I'm sorry, but I don't want to just say let's find the money and do it. I think I think we've got a lot of things for around that money. You know, we don't want again. We're trying to have a plan, and I don't want to be jumping the queues. And if we're talking about a road to the football field versus a new track versus this, and we're find, magically finding this money, I think that's a discussion. I don't think it's a find the money and do it. Aside from that, the 350,000, is that an asphalt road? Is it concrete? Does it include curbs? Is there, you know, is, is it throwing gravel down? Can you just tell me what that is briefly? Uh, we have budgeted out as an asphalt road, no curbs so that it allows the drainage to go to the sides the way it does currently. So that we don't have to put drainage pools in and curb cuts and all those things. It does not include the parking lot back by the football field it's just the crushed stone road that's there from kind of where that split is at the beginning where the gate is and then all the way back to the parking lot area so from the gate to the back or that part in front of the gate as well um whatever is not paved right now all the okay. way all the way back thank you okay other comments or questions all right, so um, we've come to an, the end of a, a year with the Finance and Facilities Committee. So uh, normally what would be happening at this point is we would have, uh, have uh, scheduled uh, meetings for next year. 
However, we don't have, uh, I don't have access at this point to the master schedule. Uh, we, we did get partial access for the CEC meeting uh, earlier in the week, but uh, I, I, there were some issues with that. I, I don't have it right now, so I'm gonna come back and come up with some dates. So I wanna know what rules to use in order to do that. Um, in scheduling meetings for this year, uh, we basically tried for uh, meeting dates, uh, meetings in, in the monthly and in the middle of the week. Is that what people still want to do? Should I go forward with that? Um, yeah. Thursday works fine for me personally. Thursday, Thursday. or Monday. Good. I'd like to okay. throw out that we plan to meet on the third Thursday of every month. Fine. Okay. Good. Yeah. We'll try Very that. Good. And what's going to happen is, is uh, the administrative calendar, they were supposed to have had their meeting, I think, yesterday. And so we're waiting the, uh, the outcome of that. And then we'll be able to plug our dates in. And I'll, I'll try for that third Thursday if I can make it work. Okay. Then, um, David? Yep. Do you want to plot an actual date for that? If, you, if we need to approve something, I forget what, before September 20th board meeting, and you want to do it early in September, should we find a date for that? Do we want to discuss preliminarily the walkthrough date? Or are we doing, I guess we're going to do that with the whole board for the walkthrough date. Uh, so for September, let's see, the third one, two, the third Thursday. Thursday is the 15th and the board meeting is follows on the 20th. So that will actually work uh, in terms of the second item, which is the, uh, the facilities walkthrough, which is both a, a finance and facilities committee meeting and is unnoticed as a board meeting. That needs to happen uh, with a little bit of lead time, probably in the month of August, so that if we find anything that you know, needs to be fixed before school opens, we can do that. I know people have vacations that get in the way. Um, so I am open to suggestion, but I, I, I can tell you that the, um, that the meeting probably needs to happen in, in the last couple of weeks of August, maybe, uh, 25th, 18th, somewhere in there. Um, how does that work for you? I suggest Thursday, the 25th of August. Okay. I'll be away on vacation, so yeah, that I'll shouldn't be, matter. But you guys can proceed, but I, I won't be around at that time. All right. Okay, so August 25th, walk through. Okay, Mr. Puglise, what normally happens is... Uh, that we come out during the day and we tour from facility to facility, either by car caravan or with a small bus, uh, depending upon uh, attendance. And, uh, and we go and we, we walk through each facility and you will, uh, you will be with us. Mr. Puglis, are you available during those dates? Yes. Good. And, uh, and we will greet uh, each principal as they will be busily preparing for, uh, for the new school year. And, uh, and tour the facilities and, and make notes and take pictures and, and report to ourselves and, and uh, assure ourselves that we're good for school opening. All right, good. Let's uh, just also say that this August is a tentative one... date that the whole board will need to, in case we have to do a special meeting to vote on some items. So this, this date may or may not change, correct, Mr. Warner? This, this proposal of the 25th? Uh, for right now, that this is this is the date for this. I don't know whether there will be additional items to be voted on at that point or not. Uh, if we need to have a special meeting sooner than that in order to get the contracts uh, rolling for phase one, then I will still advocate for some, for a date prior to that. That's in the hands of NYSED, and we will re we will react accordingly. Uh, so then, um, back to, so do I have a, I guess one other question, which is, um, in person versus full remote. Uh, so we're a committee of the, of the district. So the, the, during COVID, we were allowed to have remote meetings, but, uh, you know, committees of the board now are, are required to have at least a, an in-person presence in the rules shift. Committees of the district, because the number of, of committee members that are non-board members outnumber the number of committee members who are board members, uh, we have the ability to keep meeting like, I, I believe we can keep meeting like this, or we can go back to meeting in person. How do people feel? Do they like 
Um, do they like this online format or, or do you prefer to do in-person meetings? I like it. You like Zoom what? Meeting. I like Zoom. Okay. The Zoom is very convenient. Okay. Oh. Anybody I, I, else? Would I would agree Zoom is convenient, but potentially if we're talking about something that's on site um, that we that is worthwhile for us to go and visit, we set up a time during daylight oh, yeah. to go oh, see yeah. like when we were talking about the trees on campus and then and Dave brought in some information, I would have really like I think to actually see the space is helpful. Um, oh, but yeah. this, especially with the timing in the evening, Zoom is much better um, with all the meetings. Okay. So we'll do, what I'm hearing is we should do Zoom meetings if we're just going to look at pictures and go over rules and plans. And if we want to look at something in particular, we will do, we will do an on-site meeting and we'll schedule it at whatever facility needs to be looked at and, and mix it up uh, depending on the topics. All right. All right. And so then I, I believe what's going to happen is I'll, I'll, I'll plan out what uh, calendar dates I have and... Uh, and we will, based on the content of the meetings, we'll, we will not specify the location and whether it'll be a Zoom meeting on the on the hard copy calendar. We'll uh, we'll leave that flexible. Okay. All right. So that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything else? I'm committing to follow up with the tree, so I'll take care of it. Okay. Beautiful. About Thank the you, tree sir. on the uh, on the garage. I'll follow up with the commissioner and and get back to you. Thank you, sir. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everybody. Good meeting. Good year. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night.